Hi. Welcome back to another hsebox.com video. In this video, we will talk about 10 common waste materials we can find in the construction industry. At the end of this video, we have an offer for you, so watch till the end and don't miss it. As you know, climate change is changing the way we all interact with the use of natural resources. As an HSE professional, it is also your responsibility to promote the sustainability of your company. So, it's important that you improve your knowledge also in topics related to waste management. So keep tuned and watch this video till the end. But before we continue, I can't believe you do not subscribe to our channel yet. Do you know that subscribe to our channel is free? And drop a like it's free as well. Come on, that will encourage us to make more videos like this. Thank you very much, we really appreciate it. So, let's get started. Many people are asking, what are the different types of construction waste? It's a good question and the online answers we have seen seldom list the full range of the many construction waste types which are produced. If present each one should be included in your SWMP, Site Waste Management Plan. It is important to know the different waste types, so you can identify each and find the proper way to dispose of them. Some of this construction waste can be recycled while some are considered to be hazardous in nature. Construction waste is not just limited to the outputs from demolition. Demolition waste is the largest subcategory of construction waste, but is very far from the whole story. To effectively manage construction waste, it is important to understand what you have. And, to start you must identify and classify the types of construction waste. So, what in general are the main types of construction waste? Construction waste consists of unwanted material produced directly or incidentally by the construction or industries. This includes building materials such as insulation, nails, electrical wiring, shingle, and roofing as well as waste originating from site preparations such as dredging materials, tree stumps, and rubble. Much building waste is made up of materials such as bricks, concrete and wood damaged or unused for various reasons during construction. Observational research has shown that this can be as high as 10 to 15 percent of the materials that go into a building, a much higher percentage than the 2.5 to 5 percent usually assumed by quantity surveyors and the construction industry. Some certain components of construction waste such as plasterboard are hazardous once landfilled. Plasterboard is broken down in landfill conditions releasing hydrogen sulfide, a toxic gas. There is the potential to recycle many elements of construction waste. Often roll-off containers are used to transport the waste. Rubble can be crushed and reused in construction projects. Waste can also be recovered and recycled. Where recycling is not an option, the disposal of construction waste and hazardous materials must be carried out according to the legislation of relevant councils and regulatory bodies. The penalties for improper disposal of construction waste and hazardous waste, including asbestos, can reach into the tens of thousands of dollars for businesses and individuals. With this in mind let's talk about the 10 common waste materials we find on a construction site, but remember this is not a complete list. There's just more waste produced in the construction industry. Number 1. Building Materials Construction, demolition, restoration, and remodeling projects all produce a lot of building material waste. This waste may include insulation, nails, electrical wiring, rebar, wood, plaster, scrap metal, cement, and bricks. These materials may be damaged or unused, but can be recycled or reused in other forms. Waste wood can be recovered and recycled into the wood for new building projects. Cement, bricks, and plaster can be crushed and reused in other construction or building projects. These materials can be collected in a rolling dumpster that can then be picked up by your waste management or recycling company. Number 2. Dredging Materials Dredging materials are materials or objects that are displaced during the preparation of a construction or demolition site. These materials may include trees, tree stumps, rubble, dirt, and rocks. A waste management company can provide waste disposal and trash removal of dredging materials. If any of these materials can be reused or recycled, 
they will be taken to a recycling plant. Number 3. Hazardous Waste The sites of construction, demolition, restoration, and remodeling projects often produce hazardous waste. Contractors need to appreciate that it is possible to produce hazardous waste during construction activities from the disposal of off-cuts, part-used bottles and unused materials either bought in excess or in error. Hazardous waste may include lead, asbestos, plasterboard, paint thinners, strippers, solvents, mercury, fluorescent bulbs, and aerosol cans. These materials need to be disposed of according to strict state or country laws, such as the waste regulations. Number 4. Insulation and Asbestos Materials Asbestos is a hazardous material due to the risk of lung disease when inhaled. And even when inhaled at very low concentrations asbestos can cause this disease. The largest category of asbestos material is insulation materials containing asbestos. They are hazardous even if only contain a small proportion of asbestos. They are not recyclable and must be disposed of in accordance with best practice guidelines and regulations. Number 5. Concrete, Bricks, Tiles, and Ceramics This category excludes any asbestos-containing materials which might bear the description of concrete, bricks, tiles, and ceramics. Reinforced concrete has value as a recycled material to make new concrete. After crushing and grading to recognized quality standards. Material left over on site after crushing may often also be used as a sub-base material. A reinforced concrete crushing plant may be hired to enable the work to be done on site. Which keeps transport costs low and minimizes vehicle movements. Reuse of aggregates from the demolition of previous site structures can be very cost effective and reduce overall project costs. Number 6. Wood, Glass and Plastic This list does not include packaging wastes and domestic type recyclables. Wood is a type of construction waste that can be created during a building or demolition project. Commonly, construction sites will have excess wood beams, shavings, and other types of wooden scraps. When you are disposing of wood around your construction site, you may want to look into the possibility of recycling your wooden materials. Recycling wood will help prevent valuable resources from heading to landfill. At times the sale of wood from a demolition site can prove profitable. Reuse of high-grade wood is likely to provide the best value to construction project managers. However, lower grades may be sold if sufficient quantity is available close to a wood biomass combustion plant. Number 7. Plastic Many construction sites create large volumes of plastic waste. Plastic can be found throughout many of the materials that are used to construct a brand new building. When you are creating a waste management plan for your construction site, you will need to figure out how to properly dispose of styrofoam, PVC siding, PEX pipes, and other types of plastic materials. Number 8. Bituminous Mixtures, Coal Tar and Tar These include bituminous mixtures containing coal tar categorized as hazardous and other bituminous mixtures which may be non-hazardous. Number 9. Soil, Contaminated Soil, Stones and Dredging Spoil In the UK, as an example, you must be able to prove that your excess construction project soil doesn't contain any hazardous substances to classify soil as non-hazardous. You'll always need to assess the soil before you hand it over to be collected. The presence of any fragments of asbestos-containing material in the soil results in mixed hazardous waste. In this case, you'll need to refer to the legislation in your country. Number 10. Paints and Varnishes Those containing organic solvents or other hazardous substances are classed as hazardous. Old lead paint residues from stripping, or accumulated in other debris would fall within this category. Not containing organic solvents or other hazardous substances, classed as non-hazardous. Thank you for still with us. As we promise you, we have a special offer, Find our link in the description login into your account or create a free account. And you can download two HSE documents for free every week. Don't miss this opportunity. We hope this video helps you to improve your knowledge regarding waste on construction sites and help to improve our world. Small steps lead to big changes. If you have any questions let us know in the comments section below. And we are happy to help you.
Check our channel for more environmental and safety topics. The link is in the description. Never forget safety is your responsibility. Stay safe always. Bye bye, see you soon.